Here's a quick video on how to set the governor on a Wisconsin AEH, AFH, AGH, and AHH engine. This engine specifically is an AHH. Uh, I chose this engine for the video because there's more vertical separation between the components so it's easier to see on camera. Um, your basic setup is you have the governor down here, it's gear driven, and inside the engine block is where the governor would be, and there's a 7 inch long or so arm, depending on which model engine you have, which sticks out, um, of which ha you need to locate in order to make the adjustments. Um, there's three ways that you set the governor on these engines, and you must do them in the correct order or else the engine will surge at speed. Um, first, what you want to do is remove the cotter pin which connects the main throttle shaft linkage to the governor arm. So you pull that out, just a pair of needle nose pliers. You remove this arm right here. So now the governor arm is free to move um, in either direction. Now that's good. What Now what you want to look for is when you're setting the governor speed you don't do it with just putting any ordinary spring on there. Those springs are calibrated for the engine. Usually on the governor arm there's a hole at the top for where the linkage is to the carburetor and then there's two, four, or eight different holes right where my finger is here. You might have to uncover those with like an exacto because paint and rust could cover them up. And generally the um, the higher the hole is the higher the governed speed of the engine is. Now you want to be sure with these engines you do not overspeed them. You know, you'll shear the, the pins that hold the governor weights on there and you end up breaking the camshaft on these. Even though they're really heavy duty engines, you know, setting the governor um, is a must towards good operation. So right now I have mine set in the second highest operation which on this engine is 1800 RPM um, use. You want to use a Wisconsin spring. This one's a PM141 spring, uh, which is a medium duty spring for this engine. You could have a higher duty spring, which uh, generally a little has a little bit more uh, contraction with it, and that would run, you know, 2200 RPM, but that's not necessary for this application. So to change speed, you adjust the location of that uh, spring on that arm. You down would be lower speed, up would be higher speed. Once that's that's set. You, know, you can usually find what RPM that is in your Wisconsin manual. If you don't have one, you can kind of do it by ear or if with, a, with a handheld mechanical tack. Next, what you want to do is you want to, you know, check the slack that's in this chain. I don't know if you can see this chain in the video, but there's a fine chain which uh, Wisconsin has for their stationary engines, which goes to a lever right here. You can see me moving behind the air filter. That's um, that's calibrated for this engine. So that you, when you're running at a stiffer spring for higher RPM, you might have to remove one or more of these links from this chain in order to get um, adequate spring tension to stop it from surging at speed. But usually, if it's running in decent order, the amount of chains that you have, chain links that you have, is correct. Now, in order to set the governor in relationship to the throttle body, we remove that pin earlier. You want to, with one hand, you want to push the throttle into the full fuel position. So right now I turned that up. With another finger, you want to push this throttle shaft up into, so it's kind of aligned with the hole. You can kind of see in this video, when if you're pushing with one hand on the governor in the same uh, direction as the as the throttle and the full fuel position, you want to thread this uh, 5 by 40 threaded shaft through that barrel either direction until that's right in the center of that hole. In this case, um, we're about one thread too tight. So if you back that out a thread, you know, so that's right in the middle, you're then right in the center of that hole, you put the connecting link in there, you put the uh, the cotter pin in, and you're basically done. Um, then the governor will run properly. If the engine continues to surge at speed, you either did not move the governor arm in the correct um, direction, you either have the wrong spring on it, which you know these engines are old. You could have um, you know s some kind of hardware store spring on it, and then you want to check the chain. If all else fails and it's still surging, you want to check your valve clearances. Um, these engines, you know, are generally run in, you know, high-duty cycles. 
and when they get really hot the valves expand so your clearances could be very far off. Um, once the governor is set and the valve clearances are correct the engine will run properly. Um, I'm not going to start the video right, I'm not going to start the engine right now since it's pretty cold outside. Um, but that's basically the same uh, principle of how, how you set the governor on these engines. It's really straightforward. Um, you just got to make sure you do them in the, in the correct order. First check the, where the spring is on the hole. You check the chain uh, length to see that it's not slacking too much. I mean it should be, the spring should be slack at idle but when you, you put it at throttle, the spring should expand. Um, it should not always have, it should not always be taut. Um, and then you want to check uh, the distance, you know, by threading this linkage between the throttle body and the governor arm, because that distance will change depending on where your spring um, is located. Once that's all set, the engine is set to run, and uh, will give you many more years of good, uh, reliable service. Alright, thanks for watching.